Hello friends, welcome back to VShape Technology. In this video, I am going to teach you about how to debug a RPG LE program. So first you need to select the program which you want to debug. Now I am selecting this program to debug. So in front of this, I am entering 14. After that, you should not press enter. You should press F4. Okay. After that, press F10. Then press page down. Here you can see DBG view, which means debugging views. You have to place a star source at this point you can use list also star list also you can use again press enter enter y and press enter now you have to use one command which is str dbg space your library name slash program name after that press f4 after that you can see over here update production files you have to write star s over here and OPM source level debugging. OPM means original program module. So at this place also you have to you have to write a star S and press enter. It will take some time. Wait for that. Here you go. It is. So here you need to know one thing. Why we are using this debugging module means if you want to know how the compiler will execute the program, then you have to do this debugging mode. Now I'm taking the breakpoint at this line and you have to press f3 and now you have to call this program right so call it so the compiler will directly come to the breakpoint it won't check the remaining lines which are before the breakpoint okay now i'm going to press f10 which means the compiler will execute this line and it will show me this message now i'm pressing f10 and i'm entering the value as 5 okay and press enter if you want to see that you have to place the cursor at the variable name or under the variable name and press f11 here you can see the value num equal to 0, 05 so this is how you can see the value which is present in num after that i want to move forward right so i am pressing f10 now if you want to see the value of i then place the cursor over there and press f11 here you can see i equals to 0, 01 now i am pressing f10 again f10 if you want to see the value which is present in J, just place the cursor over there and press F11. Here you can see the value of J. After that press F10. Here I want to see the value which is present in P1. Okay. Now I'm pressing F11. Here P1 is having nothing which means blank. Okay. Now I'm pressing F10. Again F10. 4 is not equal to 0. Condition is true. Right. Then it will come inside the do while loop and it checks the condition. 1 is less than or equals to 4. Condition is true, right? Then it will come inside the flag and dot will be added to P1 and dot will be concatenated to P1. Now I am pressing F10. Now I am going to check the value which is present in P1. Press F11. Here you can see that dot is added to P1. Now I am pressing F10 again. After that, I am pressing F10 again. Here, if you want to see the value of J which is decremented or not, then place the cursor over there and press F11. Here you can see the value of J. It is decremented by 1 which means 3. Previously J value is 4. Now it is decremented by 1 which means 3. 3 is stored in J. Now again it will, it will go to the do while loop and press F10. So here you can see the compiler came back to this do while loop and it checks the condition 3 not equal to 0. Condition is true right? So it will come inside the do while loop. It checks the condition. I am pressing F10. Again F10. Here I value is 1 right. Here you can see. And J value is 3. 1 is less than or equal to 3. Condition is true right. Then it will come inside the if block. And dot will be added to P1. Now I am pressing F10 again. So now I want to see the value which is present in P1. So I am pressing F11 over here. Here you can see two dots has been added to P1. Again press F10. Press F10. And J value will be decremented by 1. This condition will be true. And this one also is true. Again another dot will be stored to P1. Like this until these conditions are true. The dot, the dot will be added to P1. Again, I am pressing F10. So now here you can see the value of J. I am pressing F11. So J is 0, right? 0 not equal to 0. Condition is false. Then it will come out of the do while loop. Now we will see what is the value which is present in P1. 
press F11. So here you can see four dots has been added to P1. After that, uh, I'm pressing F10. I'm initializing K value with none. After that, P2 with nothing. Here you can see the value of K. Press F11. K is equal to 0, 0.5. After that, press F10. F10, F10. So the loops are executed until unless the condition is true. I have already explained you about this question in the in my previous video. So please go and watch the video. After all the process has been completed, now we'll see the value of k. So k is zero, right? So condition is false. Then it will come out of the do while loop. Now I'm checking the value which is present in p2. Press f11. Here you can see one is added to p2. After that, pressing F, I'm pressing F10. So here, if you, if I want to see the value which is present in p3, how to place the cursor under the variable name? One press F11. So p3 having nothing because here I have condition l is greater than one. Initially l value is one. One is greater than one. Condition is false, right? So it won't enter into the if block. So i value will be incremented by one, which means two. Two is greater than one. Condition is true. Then it will come inside the if block and it checks the condition. One is greater than or equals to two. Condition is false, right? Then it will come out of the if block and again incremented by one, which means three. Three is greater than one. Condition is true. Then it will come inside the if block. Here one is greater than or equals to three. Condition is false, right? Then it won't enter into the if block like this the whole loop will be repeated now we'll see the value which is present in p3 press f11 here the p3 is having nothing right so in the next step i'm going to display the values which are presenting all these variables now we'll see one by one here if you press f11 if you place the cursor under the p1 and press f11 then you can see the value which is present in p1 okay after that place cursor in place cursor under p2 and press f11 you can see the value which is present in p2 one right so after that p3 so now i'm going to press f10 to the next step so that i'm pressing f10 again i value will be incremented by one which means two the condition is true again the loops will be executed line by line so if you want to see the result which is displayed on the command prompt then you have to press shift to place f9 after that you have to enter one command dsp job log display job log and press enter after that press f10 then press f page up here you can see the outputs so this is the output which have printed at the first time after that the, this is the output which have printed at the second time okay after then press enter and press enter then it will go back to the program and press F12 to remove this command prompt. Okay. After that, I'm pressing F10. Like this, the whole loops will be repeated. Here you can see the output which is printed at third time. Okay. After that, this is the output which is printed at fourth time. This is the output which is printed at fifth time. So after doing all these things, you have to press F3 and you have to end this debugging mode, right? So for that, we have a command end dbg and press enter. Now the debug mode has been ended. Now I'm compiling this program as usual and I'm calling this, I'm entering 5. So this is the output that we want. First time this line will be executed after that this line will be ex executed after that this line will be executed after that this line will be executed at last this line will be executed and it will come out of the program so that's it for this video so this is the small thing that i want to show you hope you understand friends thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video